Hi, Dr. Alina Kolchitsky, Boutique Body Works, and today I'm going to make a cake, and it's for Thanksgiving tomorrow. Uh, I get, for some reason, a Southern Living for free <laughs> to my house, and they really have yummy sounding recipes every month. So I was looking through the November issue for year 2022, and they had a bunch of recipes with sweet potato. Now I'm from Canada and yes, we eat sweet potatoes, but not to the extent in cooking for Thanksgiving that I've noticed here in the South, cause I'm here in San Antonio, Texas for the last 16 years. And I thought it'd be fun to do some kind of baked dessert with sweet potato, cause I've never done that. So they have this great looking cake. I love cake. I love to make cakes. I never make them cause I don't want to be stuck eating it by myself at home. But look how delicious the sweet potato cake looks. And it's with a cream cheese frosting, which is so yummy. I love carrot cake for, for that reason, as you may also. So um, I did do the um, baking of this sweet potato first. And really, I didn't bake it. I cooked it in the microwave ahead of time so that it would be nice and cool and ready for now. So basically, you take a large sweet potato it calls for only one and you know prick it with a fork all through around so that it won't explode and put it in the microwave for four minutes flip it over do it for another five minutes and then you have to let it cool so that you can peel and mash it so that's already ready i have all my ingredients out um i'm not sure yet how i'm going to do the cake size if i'm going to follow this and do a two-layered cake as the recipe indicates with a basic um, usual diameter pan. I might just do smaller because I'm taking this to a dinner of four girls, including myself. And I wouldn't mind having some leftover to share with friends on another day. And also we're not gonna eat a whole cake between four of us girls, especially after eating all the food. So I think I might do other sizes, but we'll see how it goes with the size of the batter because I've never made this before. So, um, next I'm going to take this, prepare it. We're going to mash it, peel it, mash it, and I'm going to measure out my dry ingredients. And then I'm going to measure out my moist ingredients like you usually do for cakes, mix them up, and then we'll come back to do it all together. Okay. Okay, I'm back and I have my butter and sugar ready to beat it sure is not you know what makes it a mess use a deeper bowl that's too messy okay I put in one egg now and it's not spraying all over the place. So either a bigger, deeper dish, a uh, bowl to mix it in. It does tell you to use a mixing bowl, a standing mixing bowl. They are very expensive, very huge and heavy. I don't bake enough things that require that for me to warrant the space, the cost of space and whatever. I like, I only have so much space. I don't want to clutter it with things I hardly ever use. So I do without. Anyways, so you're supposed to mix one egg at a time. I mixed one already. Now it's mixing in a way that's not splashing everywhere. Uh, if I wasn't making the video, I also would have done this in the sink. That also saves us from making a mess. Beating that in, incorporating the second egg. to go. So it calls for three eggs. There were three quarters of a cup of butter, um, one cup and a quarter of sugar. Let me wash my hands. What seems like a lot of sugar to me because I'm really developed a palate of low sugar and it's going to have cream cheese frosting. So personally, if I was making this just for me, I probably would have cut that in half. But I'm making it for other people, so I'm going to follow. 
follow the recipe. Also, because it is a dry ingredient, we don't want to offset the balance of wet to dry and end up messing up the chemistry of our perfect cake. It needs to bake to the right texture and that part of the factors that go into that variables include the quantities of liquid and dry ingredients. The milk with molasses and sweet potato, the dry, and then our fat, the egg, butter, and sugar. So next, we're gonna add half of this into this. I guess I should have used the bowls in the reverse. Well, live and learn. I know next time if I repeat. So I'm gonna incorporate half of this. Nice. And now we're going to put half of this. I can't wait to see how this turns out. So there's still some chunks in there. So it would have been better to puree the sweet potato. Not too late. So let's do that step next. Okay, live and learn. So I pureed this more. Got the lumps out of this one. I need the bigger pot, so the bowl rather. So now I'm gonna, instead of take this into here, I'm just gonna pour this into here. So that's the next step to get the rest of the flour mixture in there. I must confess, I licked my finger and mmm, mm, it tastes yummy already. waste. So we'll store that. Bring the last of the 
flour mixture. Some low speed. My oven is already preset and it's next temperature. It's ready. milk mixture with the sweet potato. out the rest of this because there's still a lot left there. The right tools make all the difference. I don't know if I can show that, but it's just cleaning out the bowl so much better than the fork. <laughs> baked it yet. I can't wait to how the house will smell after baking this. Okay, mix that up. around the edges and just get everything off the sides to make sure it's incorporated. mixed. So next we're going to prepare the baking dishes and pour. Be back. Okay I'm back today Thanksgiving morning and I'm ready to do the frosting, the cream cheese frosting for the sweet potato cake. Sweet potato cake turned out amazing. Um, I already sliced off the bottom to place on individual plates so that I'm ready to ice both surfaces but the bottom is or the top of the cake was cut across just to make it smooth so that it'll sit flat and look more symmetrical so they're ready to be iced they're cool because they've cooled overnight and it tastes delicious I ate the sliced part last night and it was so good so it's a good recipe I highly recommend it and now we're gonna try the cream cheese frosting, which is basically just um, three quarters of a cup of butter. I have um, unsalted butter, it says, and I've got organic, of course. And then um, cream cheese, also organic cream cheese, one and a half packages. So we're gonna blend that for three minutes. Let me lower this.
And then afterwards, we just one cup at a time with the icing sugar. It says to do it on medium. So basically it needs to get nice, light and fluffy. So we're feeding on medium for three minutes. Okay, so we've beaten it to a light, fluffy consistency. Uh, because it's cream cheese, is pretty thick, cream cheese with butter. So I'm gonna just spatula off the sides of the bowl, everything back into the center, and then we'll add the vanilla and the salt. Now the baking side is done. So being precise with measurements, when it comes to flavor, we don't have to be so precise. So technically it says three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Also says three teaspoons of vanilla. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Did you know one tablespoon is three teaspoons? <laughs> so there we go, that's about a tablespoon. Of just pure vanilla. I like to use organic and pure vanilla as opposed to artificial, although they say we're gonna run out of real vanilla. So we're gonna stir or blend this well. Just wanna make sure all the flavors is getting incorporated. just one cup of icing sugar or confectioner sugar. I have two measured out already, so I'm just gonna pour half of this. And we'll blend that up cup by cup. One cup in, three to go. I'll be back. And voila, my cake is decorated. I simply took two sprigs of rosemary from the garden and a hibiscus that's beginning to fade or decline the flower, which I think is appropriate for fall, for Thanksgiving, right? Everything has come to harvest. It's uh, waning in its growth, but have that beautiful colors 
for the season. Make sure if you decorate with plants that they are non-toxic plants. <laughs> so these are edible. Hibiscus is actually edible. We might have heard of hibiscus tea. Very common where I live here in San Antonio, Texas, in Mexico, in Central America, and South America. And yeah, I think it looks pretty. I will take them off when uh, cutting to serve. But have fun with this and decorate whatever your creative heart desires and enjoy. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.